Up to this point, we have worked on how to solve one-step, two-step, and multi-step equations. We've also worked on how to graph linear equations, meaning there were several solutions that were correct, um, and those solutions made a straight line. Now we're going to work on solving a system of equations, which means we have more than one equation. Um, typically, it's two, but once we get into inequalities, quite often there are you know, three or four or five inequalities. And a system of equations, what we're looking for is a value that will make any equation in that system true. So, and notice here that we have a brace, and this brace is what's going to tell us that we're dealing with a system. So why are they important? The real importance of a system of equations has to do with problem solving. So quite often we can look at a question, we can write equations from the information given to, that, to us in the problem, and then be able to find the best deal or the best solution or the break-even point for whatever that situation happens to be. Here's an example where I've already graphed both equations for you. One equation dealt with how expensive a yellow cab is versus how expensive a blue cab is. So as we can see, the total cost at zero miles is different, meaning the blue cab company charges more for you to get into the cab. But as we can see that that line does not um, increase at the same rate as the yellow cab. So it's actually cheaper per mile for the blue cab. Um, the yellow cab starts off much cheaper but the price increases quickly. So in the interval from zero to three miles, so from zero to three, we can see that the blue cab company is the more expensive choice. So what can we learn? In the interval from zero to three, we could say blue is more expensive, is more expensive, um, or we could say yellow is less expensive either way. In the interval from three on to infinity, meaning forever, once we hit three, it's very clear that the yellow is more expensive or the blue would be cheaper. And obviously we're trying to save money. So if I only had to go two miles, I would probably choose the yellow company because that is cheaper. If I had to go more than three miles, I would go with the blue company because it's cheaper. At the point three comma eight, what do we know? Well, we know at three comma eight, it's going to be the same price for either cab company. So if I were going exactly three miles, it wouldn't matter which cab company I chose. So at the point three eight, um, both cab companies would cost $8. That's what we would know at that point. When we solve a system of equations, whether it's by graphing or by any of the other methods that we'll explore throughout this week's lessons, there are really three options. There are is one option where you would have the two lines that would cross at exactly one point, and whatever that one point happens to be, that would be the solution to the system. So you would have one solution, we would write it as an ordered pair, and it, be, it would be whatever the coordinates are for that point where the two lines cross. This is considered consistent because whenever we have a solution, it's considered consistent and it's independent because the equations represent different lines. They're independent of one another. Another option is that the two lines are parallel, which means they would never cross. When two lines never cross, therefore we would have no solution because they never cross each other. And we know that the solution is where the two lines cross. This is considered inconsistent because there is no solution. Our last option is that we have the same line twice that is basically drawn on top of each other. So it's the same line two times. That has infinitely many solutions because all of the solutions are the points on this line. So every time we have a point on this line, that is a solution. And there are an infinite amount of those because the line goes on forever. This is also consistent because there is a solution, but it's dependent because they're the same line. So for this first lesson, we're really going to focus on whether or not something is a solution to a system. To do that, we need to determine, does the point they give us fall on each of the two or three or however many lines they give us? So for my first one, they gave me a point of negative 416, 
And what they're saying is, if I graphed these, would they in fact cross at negative 416 or would negative 416 be a solution to both equations? To find out, I'm going to replace y with 16 and I'm gonna replace x with negative four and then I'm going to solve and see, do they in fact equal each other? Negative four times negative four is 16. So, so far it's good because negative four 16 is a point on the line of y equals negative four x. Now I have to do the same for 16 equals negative two times negative four plus eight. And I'm asking, are they equal? Negative two times negative four is eight, plus eight gives me 16 equals 16, which is correct. So yes, because this point lies on both lines, it is a solution to the system of equations. Another example, again, I'm going to replace y with the y value, which in this case is four. I'm going to replace x with the x value, which is two and then I'm going to see if both sides equal. Three times two is six, six minus two is four, and four does equal four. And now I'm going to check the second equation. Four equals two times two plus one. Four equals five, that's not correct, so no, it's not a solution to the system. It is a point on my first line, but not for my second line. Here are two for you to try, so try them on your own, then press play to see how you did. For my first one, I'm going to replace y with negative one and x with three. And that gives me negative one equals six minus eight. Negative one does not equal negative two, and so I don't even have to check my second one because it's not a point on my first line, therefore it doesn't matter if it's a point on my second line. So the, my first example is no. For my second one, I get negative one equals negative two times three plus five, which gives me negative six plus five, which gives me a true statement for my first equation. Now I have to check the second equation. Negative one equals five minus nope, just kidding, equals three, which is my x value, minus four. Three minus four is negative one. Negative one does equal negative one, so yes, this is a solution to the system.